Good afternoon and welcome once again to the 30 day mental diet. We are now on day 21 using the power of love. This is a wonderful message, a wonderful lesson for the day. I, I hope you're, everyone is following along and reading the 30 day mental diet at least in the morning, in the afternoon and in the evening. Well, so let's go along using the power of love. And the subheading says, love alone makes life worthwhile. Let's read the introduction together. <clears throat> it, would, it could be said that the most important single thing in your experiencing of a more worthwhile life is your capacity to love. Love has been described as the greatest thing in the world, a force that cannot be resisted and that establishes peace and harmony. You are probably, probably so used to hearing songs about it and reading what the poets ha have said that for the most part, you have failed to recognize the most important practical benefits of love in your daily life. The next paragraph says the necessity of love. To establish and maintain a mental and emotional attitude of love is essential in every aspect of your life. You are never devoid of a reaction to a person or situation. And when you are not capable of having a favorable attitude, you find yourself with one which contain resentment, hate, and dislike. Love alone is a constructive factor. Now, this is a very, very interesting statement here. This is said here that you are never devoid of a reaction to a person or a situation. So when you're in the presence of other people, you react in a certain way according to what's being given off, the vibrations that's being given off. The same thing in a situation. You are not devoid where situations on the outside in some way don't affect you. Everything affects us. We choose how we react. But people and situations affect us and we're not devoid of that. Now, it's important, it says that if we want a favorable, favorable reaction from other people and other and situations, we must first have love in our heart. Love for the person. We may not like the person's behavior. We may not like certain components, but we are commanded that we should love our neighbors. And when we do that, we will receive back, reciprocate back to us the love that we put out. And that's a very, very important thing that we should always remember. We are not devoid. Situations and people do affect us. Let me move down. When you lack love, you are denying yourself the very thing that you say you most desire, a more worthwhile life. Actually, you have no choice as to whether you shall love. It is a ma matter of necessity, for without it, every aspect of, of your experience deteriorates. Wow. So, if you're in a relationship, and there's no love in there, that's going to de deteriorate. If you are in a, a vocation or occupation, a job, and you don't love your job, your relationship to that job will deteriorate. So love is important. And, we, and it's been said over and over by successful people all the time, we should do what we love. And when we do what we love, our work becomes like play. It's no longer work, but it's 
we do we're enjoying and so we don't need an alarm clock to wake up in the morning we just jump up out of bed because we love what we do let's move on physical aspects what many people do not re realize is the vital importance of an attitude of love on their physical well-being. There is practically no function of the body that cannot be adversely affected by its lack. Conversely, the person who is able to embody a feeling of love in every respect finds that his body functions in a more harmonious manner. Hmm. So, love affects our physical body also. So, if love affects our physical body, then that means hate also affects our physical body. So, we have to be very, very careful on what emotions we are harboring in our heart on a regular basement basis and we know because we are we know ourselves mental aspects when hatred and animosity instead of love fill your mind there is tur tur turmoil confusion and lack of constructive thinking hatred animosity in your mind brings confusion to the mind. That's one of the reasons why the scripture says vengeance is mine because it is proven over and over a person that hates someone or hates a situation and seeks vengeance. Vengeance is a form of hate. Love turned into itself. An obsession with hate of a object a person or whatever it is and when you hold that hatred in, in your heart that hatred can destroy you so you might set out to destroy someone else and in this in the in the in the uh act of trying to destroy someone else destroying that thing that you hate you end up destroying yourself also it's very very important because whatever you put out in the universe must come back to you. So if you're putting out into the universe hatred, it must come back to you because first cause is always mental. There's a story in the book of uh, Esther in the Bible and um, there was a gallows set up to hang the Jews and the person that set up those gallows to hang the Jews was the one that ended up hanging him and his family on, on, on that thing. So it's very, very important that we do not harbor any form of hatred in our heart. Very, very, but only love. Because if we put out love, love will come back to us. And the scriptures constantly remind us over and over, love your enemies. Pray for those that despitefully use you. Very, very important. There's one thing they do not like. Okay. When intense dislike is uttermost in your thought, it becomes an obsession and dominates everything you do and say in a negative manner. I don't know if you've ever been around a person that dislikes uh, maybe it's a po political party. Maybe it's a certain person. Maybe it might be their job. It, whatever it is they hate. No matter what you do, whatever your conversation is on, you may be in a conversation about one thing, but they will turn it back, that conversation, because they're obsessed with this hatred. And everything is pointing towards that. That's one of the reasons why it's be very, very important who you give your allegiance to. Because when you give allegiance to something, especially when you're dealing with things like political parties and things like that, a lot of people don't like to, to, to feel that they were wrong. 
and they will dig down in their pos in their position because they're obsessed with this hatred for the other side. You see all over the world political violence, religious violence, because this person is not like me. I am going to, I hate them. I'm going to do uh, violence to them. We see it all over the place, uh, all over the world in different sects, violence against people of another race, another belief, whatever it is. And that hatred up becomes an obsession. Be very, very careful what you harbor in your mind and what you, if you're always coming back to the same talking negative about a certain situation or person. Okay, so let's move forward. Love is a magnet. You must never overlook the fact that any feeling contrary to a sense of love is depriving you of the things you would like the most. Those emotions are strong you you those emotions you strongly feel have the ability to draw into your experience their tangible counterparts. Now I'm going to tell you a quick story. I have four children and I have one son. And my son was my last born. And one of a friend of mine said to me after I had my third daughter says, Carl, you should give it up. You cannot make boys. And I laughed. And I heard someone said something. And I said, I'm going to apply it. And if the person said that if you want something in your life, you must express love at all points when you see uh, for that for that thing. Anyway, I saw a little boy. I would salute him, uh, edify him. If uh, someone else had a son, I would give a gift for the son. So when my wife became pregnant, by the time we got to the, um, the delivery room, I already knew I had a son because I had made this thing that I love. I saw it coming to me, you know? So it's saying here is that the emotions you strongly feel have the ability to draw into your experience their tangible counterparts. This is one of the reasons why if someone is prospering and doing well, you should be happy for them. Congratulate them. If someone has something that you would like to have, be feel good for them. Edify them. Stay in their space and soak up their vibration. And those things that that person possess will also come into your life. Very, very important. The important thing is not to struggle against undesirable experiences, which evidence of lack of expression of love, but instead, instead remold them by remolding your thoughts so that it is a complete embodiment of love. So this is important. There's time to time we're fighting against something. And the thing that we're fighting for, fighting against, we're actually creating more off. So it's saying here, don't struggle against the undesirable experience or evidence. It's because when you struggle against the undesirable experience, it is an evidence of lack. But we have learned in previous lessons that God has provided all things to you. Turn away from the thought of the lack of the thing not being there and see within your mind the thing, the situation, the evidence of the thing that you desire. And love that experience. This is one of the reasons why we speak constantly about meditation and visualization. And that's why we write down our goals and we, and we visualize them because we are not focusing on the lack of things. We're not focusing on a negative situation. We are creating with our thoughts the things that we desire to see in the physical world. 
Let's go down. Love is essential. The person who is not loved or who, who seems incapable, incapable of loving soon find that his life begins to wither away. For your physical and mental welfare, you must develop the capacity to love. Because if you don't, you not only deprive yourself, but others of the benefits of this constructive power. Love may be said to be a, an essential aspect of all living things. And if you fail to incorporate it, incorporate it into your living, you cut yourself off from life. So let's read the, the um, conclusion here. Reading growing up. The capacity to increase your experience of the benefits of love is a never ending process. You have to start removing every big and little negative attitudes you can discover within yourself. You start being constructive rather than adding to what you already might dislike. The greatest constructive creative force is love, and you can use this power to, re to remold, transform, and renew your whole experience in living. What a wonderful, wonderful thought here. And let's read here uh, what in the, in the section where it says philosophy. Let's read this. It says, Love is the substantial bond between the universal and the individual, the divine and the human. Love is God himself, and apart from it, there is no God. Love makes man and God, and God man. What a wonderful statement here. And in the scriptures, in the book of Galatians 5, it says, by love, serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor and as thyself. We're going to read together the diet. And like I said once again, the diet this today is a wonderful diet. And I want you to read the diet with passion, with emotion. We want these words to go straight into your subconscious mind and push out all negative thoughts in the contrary, okay? So let's read the diet together. All is the creation of the harmonious action of God, an expression of God's love. It is in this love that I live, move, and have my being. I now declare that in everything I am and do, I accept a greater influx and outflow of the love that is God. As I love, I am loved. As I help another, I am helped. My whole life is filled with a sense of love for all people. My way is made clear. My cup runneth over. My body is made whole. And my experiences are happy through the creative power of the God-like love that I express in all ways. The love I express brings joy to others and returns to me, making my life worthwhile. Regardless of what confronts me, I meet the situation with the creative, constructive force of love, which makes all things right. The love that is God, the great motivating power of all life, I recognize as actively renewing and transforming every aspect of my experience. Love alone rules my life. Thank you so much once again for tuning in to the 30 Day Mental Diet. Tomorrow will be our third week on the 30 day mental diet. And I want to thank you if you've been following along since day one. I would love to hear from you. Below you can comment on this video, make a comment on this, on this lesson, and I will reply back. If you like the video, give us a thumbs up and please 
subscribe to the channel so you will be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thank you again, and I'll see you tomorrow in the 30-Day Mental Diet.